Rob Hollywood, the Judy Canova Show. <laughs> Brought to you each week by the Colgate Palm Olive Feet Company, makers of Halo Shampoo to glorify your hair. And the new 1948 Super Suds with extra suds for extra whiteness. The Judy Canova Show with Mel Blank, Ruby Dandridge, Joe Kearns, Ruth Parrott, Hans Conried, The Sportsman, Charles Dant and his orchestra, and starring Judy Canova. <laughs> With hay and high and ho, ho, ho You start off the day with a glow, ho, ho Sing all the way as the way you go With hay and high and a ho, ho, ho Up go the blinds and you know, ho, ho It ain't gonna rain anymore, ho, ho Sun's gotta shine cause you made it so With a hay and a high and a ho, ho, ho Why you buy the paper? Have a little happy little hum Got a little paper, singing happiness, here I come. With a hey and a hi and a ho, ho, ho. You smile from your head to your toe, ho, ho. Pack up your blues and away they go. With a hey and a hi, a hey and a hi, a hey and a hi and a ho. Well, today, a man from a radio fan magazine is coming over to interview Judy for an article entitled, A Day in the Life of Judy Canova. The magazine wants to illustrate the article. So, at the moment, Judy and Aunt Aggie are searching for some pictures on the old family album. Right now, they're looking at Judy's baby pictures. Oh, Judy, look at this cute baby picture of you in the album. Look, you're lying down on something. Is that bear skin? It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. Can't you tell by my goose pebbles? <laughs> I was right in style, too. Bare midriff from head to toe. <laughs> Judy, who are all the people in this picture? Oh, that picture was took during the family reunion. See that? That's my Uncle R.T. in the back row. But he has his hand over his face. I know. Just when the picture was took, and he sneezed. <laughs> was he catching a cold? No, he was catching his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and look here, sitting down in front, Aunt Aggie. Well, Judy, surely that isn't one of your relatives. No, that was our favorite hen. She won a prize at the county fair for laying a five-pound egg. A five-pound egg? That's wonderful. Oh, it ain't so wonderful. What else could you do with it? <laughs> you know, Aunt It'll be nice getting a picture and a story about me in that magazine. Yes, Judy. I hear it has the widest distribution in the country. <laughs> what am I talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Geranium. Say, did I hear you and your boyfriend Pomeroy smooching in the kitchen last night? Oh, no, Miss Judy. Pomeroy never puts his arms around me. You mean you don't allow it? No, he can't make it. <laughs> sweet on each other, aren't you? Oh, we sure are, Miss Judy. I call him my little butterscotch Sunday. <laughs> Does he like that? Yeah, honey, he says, come here, my little marshmallow, and sprinkle me with tooty fruity. Geranium, Tom Roy sure must be awful fond of you. Oh, he sure is, Miss Judy, but I think he'd like me better if I had a figure like... Like Lena Horn. Well, why, Geranium? What's Lena Horn got that you haven't got? Honey, she's built. I'm prefabricated. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Geranium. <laughs> You're always exaggerating about your figures. Yeah, you got a lot of nice curves. Curves? <laughs> Honey, most of them are practically U-turns. <laughs> oh, Judy, Judy. Yes, Aunt Aggie. Mr. Miller from the radio magazine is here. Thanks, Aunt Aggie. Oh, howdy, Mr. Miller. I'm all ready for the interview. Oh, that's fine, Judy. We can get started right away. Now, uh, when you first came to Hollywood, where did you live? Well, now, uh, let me see now. When I first came here, I wanted a nice place to stay, so I got me a room at the YMCA. 
Why, but the YMCA is filled with boys. I know. I wanted a nice place to stay. <laughs> well, tell me what happened next, Judy. Well, next I fell in love. Do you know what happens when love finds Judy Canova? No. Well, when love finds Judy Canova, it says... Get lost. <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> say, you know, Mr. Miller, being on the radio sure keeps me busy. Well, I don't see how you can fill a whole day, Judy. Oh, boy, I sure was busy yesterday. There's one interruption right after another. Interruption? Tell me about it. Well, so first I had to go to the dress shop. I was just getting into my car when I heard a loud, booming voice holler out at me and say, Pardon me for talking in your face, Senorita. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Pedro. Say, you look frightened. What's wrong? Oh, senorita, I had a terrible scare this morning. I thought I had been kidnapped. <laughs> Why, Pedro, what made you think you were kidnapped? Well, when I got up, I looked in my bed and I wasn't there. <laughs> but, senorita, when I went to shave, I felt better. You did? See, I looked in the mirror and there I was. <laughs> And I'm glad it was me. I hate to shave a stranger. Pedro, Pedro, you must have been out late last night. I was, senorita. I had a date with my girl, and gollies, last night I spent a fortune on her face. Trying to make it look beautiful? No, trying to fill it with cheeseburgers. <laughs> senorita, me and my girl went to the beach with the air to see that picture, Body and Soul. Oh, Pedro, I saw that picture. It's all about prize fighting. See, I used to be a prize fighter down in Mexico. <laughs> and one time I fought a champion. Golly, the champ must have given you an awful beating. See, he did. He knocked the pants off me. <laughs> well, why didn't your manager throw in the towel? He couldn't. When I got my pants knocked off, I had to wear the towel. Well, Pedro, I'll see you later. I gotta get over to the dress shop. Well, adios, senorita. And always remember, 30 days, Hacienda, April, June, and Sombrero. All the rest have 31 except those new long skirts, and you can't see what they've got, no? <laughs> Do, madam. Have you been waited upon? <laughs> no, I ain't. Is there something I can show you? Well, I want something super exclusive, something real chic. Oh, then I better call in our fashion designer, Monsieur Alphonse Pierre. Everybody in Hollywood wears Pierre's clothes. Gosh, Pierre must get awful chilly. <laughs> oh, Monsieur Pierre, a customer to see you. Oh, Kevin to Bessie, Veronica. <laughs> How could you call me at such a critical moment? Can't you see I was just arranging the lace filigree on that chateau's taffeta? Say, <laughs> hey, Monster Pierre, I hear you're the best fashion designer in the United States. Oh, fiddle-faddle. I have a feeling you're just pulling my leg. <laughs> no, no, you probably got your garters hooked to your shorts. <laughs> Complete new outfit. I want to get some classy new pajamas. Oh, goody goody gumdrops. I have just the thing. <laughs> <laughs> She's a perfectly stunning pair of imported silk pajamas. They're just tops. No, sir. I want the bottoms too. I'll print them. <laughs> Say, tell me, do you have these here pajamas in red? No. Well, do you have them in chartreuse? No. Do you have peach? No. Do you have flesh? Well, of course. What do you think holds me together, you big silly? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to buy a lot of stuff, so you better take my measurements while I'm here. Oh, well, if you insist. Let's go, Veronica. Take her measurements. Okay. Hold still, please. Back length, 34. Shoulders. 34. Waist, 
Thirty-four. Hip. Thirty-four. Keep going. There must be a curve in there somewhere. Hips and knees. Thirty-four. Knees to ankles. Thirty-four. Hey, uh, Veronica, I think there's something you ought to know. What's that? Put on your glasses. You're measuring the showcase. <laughs> It's great. It's a hit. It's the new 1948 Super Suds with extra suds for extra whiteness. No other soap in the world can wash clothes whiter. And you need no bleach. Those extra suds do the work. No other soap in the world can remove more dirt, wash clothes cleaner, wash clothes whiter than the new 1948 Super Suds. Even stubborn grease spots come sparkling clean with less rubbing, and white shirts come dazzling white. Colors stay bright, too, and those extra suds are so gentle on hands. All is a great suds maker. The new 1948 Super Suds can make even more suds for extra whiteness. Just one box of new Super Suds can make enough suds to fill two school buses with suds. So, for the cleanest, whitest Super Suds wash you've ever had, get Colgate Palmolive Pete's new 1948 Super Suds at your dealers now. No other soap in the world can wash clothes whiter. And remember, you need no bleach. Super suds, super suds, lots more suds for whiter duds. Now back to Judy Canova and one of her own unusual musical interpretations. Have you heard these blues that I'm gonna sing to you? When you hear them, life will be so sweet for you. You go blue, everybody's singing the sugar blue. Lay me down and die You can say what you choose But I'm all confused I've got the sweet, sweet sugar Blues, my sugar Got the sweet, sweet sugar Blues la 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 Judy is still talking to Mr. Miller from the Radio Fan Magazine and telling him about a typical busy day in her life. Now, Judy, I want to write about the interesting things in your daily life. Did anything happen yesterday that might come in that category? Uh, oh, yeah, Mr. Miller. Yesterday, my vocal teacher came over and had me run over a few scales. I sure hate singing them same old scales. <laughs> No, no, Miss Canova. Please, huh? sing that la again. That what? La. Do, re, mi, va, do, la. La. L-A. It was not quite clear. Shucks, it ain't been clear in L-A for a long time. <laughs> All right. 
do, re, mi, fa, fa. Miss Canova, stop the beginning before you get commenced. <laughs> now, please, look at your scale. Okay, I'm looking. Now, the black is the music. The white is the paper. <laughs> Sing the black. <laughs> And remember, I want to hear those pear-shaped tones. Each tone should come out shaped like a pear. Which in first? <laughs> all right. Well, well, why do you want me to sing, Moose Roy? <laughs> Just sing any song, my little lamb. Oh, I know a song about lambs. It goes like this. Poor little lamb. Who has lost their Ba is right. <laughs> what is the name of that song? Oh, uh, it's called a whipping poop song. Why? What's wrong? You were whipping when you should have been poofing. <laughs> Language. I'd like it better if you sang in a foreign country. <laughs> Miss Galova, I don't want you to sing any Wuffenpiffer songs, no. Uh, we try something simple, huh? I want you to just sing just one note, one note, and keep singing it. So start, please. One, two. La, no, la, no, la, please, la, la, don't. La, 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 well, Mr. Miller, I guess you can see that a typical day for me is a pretty busy one. Why, Judy, I bet you aren't any busier now than you were before you got into radio. Shucks, before I got into radio, I lived in Cactus Junction. <laughs> Something was going on there all the time. Yes, I remember one morning back home, Ma was saying to Pa... She walked over to him and she said to him, she said, Wake up, Paul. Wake up, you lazy critter. <laughs> Get up, Paul. Our boy Willie just fell in the well. <laughs> Too bad I ain't thirsty. I'd go out and pull up the bucket. <laughs> Oh, that's the third time this week Willie fell in the well. I wondered why our drinking water tasted like overalls. <laughs> Say, why is Buford our littlest young and pa? I hate feed him in so long I can't remember what he looks like. What's the matter, Ma? I just remembered what Buford looks like. Pa, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to have company for breakfast today. Who, Ma? Dude, this dumb boyfriend Lukey's coming over. Yeah, I invited him to break bread with us. I hope he can break his. I can't even bend mine. Paul, <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I tell you about our cow falling right over in the pasture today? Another dizzy spell, Ma. No. Sick. No. Tired. No. Well, what's wrong with her? She's dead. <laughs> Look, Ma. Here comes Lukey up on the porch now. Oh, they live. 
Holy folks, hey, them terrible just happened. I was out, 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 I was I'm out the road, sure is dangerous. If you wonder, they don't put up a warning sign. Oh, they had a warning sign up there for two years. But nobody fell off, so they took it down. <laughs> you got any news from down the holler, Lugie? Well, I sure have, and that's good news, too. I entered my hog in a hog show, and, whoa, look at that there blue ribbon I got there, boy. <laughs> Lukey, did your hog win? No, I took first prize myself. Ah, <laughs> uh, you sure are a husky critter, Lukey. Look how your muscles fill out your coat. Them ain't muscles, Ma. Them's the wrinkles in his long winter underwear. <laughs> oh, well, I am so a husky. Why, I'm the strongest fellow in the whole neighborhood. <laughs> you can say that again and open the window. <laughs> Lukey, what are you doing with that insect spray in your hand? Oh, well, shucks, I'm going to buy a couple of horses. What's that got to do with insect spray? Well, that ad in the paper said, for sale, two horses, one buggy. <laughs> Lugie, you're an imbecile. Gosh, dang! <laughs> well, if you folks will excuse me, I'm going in the other room and court duty. By dingy dongies, I sure do love that there girl, boy! <laughs> Well, Paul, let's get the chores done. Yeah. yeah. I'll milk the goat and you look at the corn. See if it's ready to put in the bottles yet. <laughs> There's always something to do around here. Here's like a buddy can't get no time for nothing. And that, Mr. Miller, was a typical day in my life before I got into radio. Well, that should make a very interesting story, Judy. Now, if I could just have a picture of you to go with it. Oh, sure. I got one for you right here in the family album. See? Oh. Oh, but, Judy, this this picture is all blurred. It's not even finished. Yeah, I know. The photographer refused to finish developing it. But why? He was afraid to be alone with it in a dark room. <laughs> hey, Lord, everybody, hey, Lord. Use Halo Shampoo if you want naturally bright and beautiful hair. Remember, even finest soaps and soap shampoos hide the natural luster of your hair with dulling soap film. But Halo contains no soap, therefore cannot leave dulling soap film. The first time you use Halo, your hair glistens in all its natural brilliance. The natural color and luster shine through like sunshine through a clean window pane. And remember, even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather. Halo quickly carries away loose dandruff and grease. Needs no lemon or vinegar rinse, because Halo leaves no dulling soap film. Nothing to hide your hair's natural beauty. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Use Halo on your children's hair, too. Get Halo shampoo at any cosmetic counter. Remember, Halo glorifies your hair. So hello, everybody, hello, hello, shampoo, hello. Now back to Judy Canova and the sportsman and the musical query, Don't You Love Me Anymore? Baby, whenever you hold me, you don't hold me tight. Don't you 
by Fred Fox and Henry Hooper with John Ward and is produced and directed by Joe Ryan. This is Howard Petrie asking you to use Halo Shampoo to glorify your hair and the new 1948 Super Suds with extra suds for extra whiteness. Now here's Judy. Sorry, we're a little late tonight, folks. Good night. Good night, Mom and Queen. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. No other toothpaste does a better job of cleaning teeth. For Colgate cleans teeth thoroughly, safely, brings out natural sparkle and beauty. And scientific tests prove conclusively that in seven out of ten cases, Colgate Dental Cream instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. So always use Colgate Dental Cream after you eat and before every date to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Stay tuned to Kay Kaiser's College of Musical Knowledge with his new feature, Comedy of Errors, which follows immediately. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.